How's it going everybody? It's another beautiful day. I think the weather has turned for the better. I'm happy. It's nice out, no wind. It was good to get some tree line work done. As you guys can see, I could slash in my tree line all day. Um, I'm cutting some of the bigger stuff away because that stuff's dying off. It's breaking and I'm letting the smaller stuff grow. Um, the area I was working on yesterday, that's got lots of sunlight and that's kind of in front of the tree line. So uh, tree lines are important here because they keep the wind and snow away. Um, and also you want to keep them clean. Um, farmers burn the fields here and if that fire, now usually they, they'll till a fire break around and I don't worry about it too much. Um, farmers are super careful and they know how to deal with fire. But uh, if that, if, if you happen to get wind and it passed the fire break, if you got a tree line full of dead wood like I do, you can have a major, major uh, fire. So it was fun to run two stock saws and that just shows you guys, um, those saws do the job and will do it day after day. They couldn't run more different. One's more of a torquey saw, one's a zippity you know, high speed, um, high chain speed kind of saw. The 562, you have to run that saw totally different than most saws. You got to keep the RPM up, have a really sharp chain, uh, a higher raker. But if you do that, those things rip. Uh, the inverse of that is the 365's got, it's more of a torque saw. Um, you can, you can have a little bit lower raker, and just kind of let it chug along. So they both cut it about the same speed. I couldn't tell a difference in power. Um, but yeah, that was fun. Maybe next time we do a stock saw, I'll add the 576 into the mix. That one's stock with a muffler mod. That has an extra horsepower. Um, I think I'll definitely feel the difference in power between that and the other two saws, but just funner on different saws. Uh, different strokes for different folks, as they say. And if you run stock saws, that's that's cool too. I started with just stock saws, and I started modding them. My 365 was the first saw I started modding to improve its power output with a base gasket delete, uh, a muffler mod. Then I went in and did transfer work. Before I was even using a time wheel, I went into that and did transfer work and a muffler mod and a base gasket delete. And it ran better and better, and then I finally threw a wheel on it and ported it twice, I think, to get it to where it is. So um, that's how it starts. You want more power in a lighter package. Anyhow, friends, let's jump back into the 038 Magnum. This project's been taking a little while, but it is what it is. Um, this is Fab Willie's saw. He's the guy that makes all the fancy dogs that you see on the channel. Um, him and his, I don't know the story, but I guess him and his brother owned this saw together or something. And uh, it didn't run. It was blown up. It's been shelved for years. Um, this is a saw that you should look over really good because you, you don't know. I don't know why this thing was shelved. It still had compression. It was slightly scored. Um, the bottom end's clean now. Um, now, friends, a saw like this that's been sitting on a shelf. For years and years, it had like an open, you guys saw the muffler that was on it. If you don't, if you didn't go back when I took this saw apart, it had a wide open muffler. I guess somebody put a plate in the front of it and drilled all these holes. Um, if you have a saw sitting like that, if the exhaust port is open for years and it's been in a shop, you guarantee there's going to be dust in the bottom end. This thing was full of crud. Um, I went in there, just take some brake clean or diesel transmission fluid will work in a pinch, even gas. Fill the bottom end up and let it sit for, you know, an hour or two overnight, whatever you want to do, and then blow it out with your blow gun and the bottom end will get, will be shiny and new. Like you'll get all the crud out of there. Do that a couple times. Um, you don't want to, you don't want to fire up a saw full of crud in the bottom end because that could take out your bearings and could take out your top end. You never know, right? Sometimes it's good, but it's like, friends, I get emails all the time. Somebody will put a brand new piston into a saw and they'll send me pictures and the pic the piston's all scuffed up. That's not always the top end. That could be something coming out of the bottom, going through the transfers and then hitting the cylinder wall and the piston scuffing it. So um, these old saws definitely take a lot more work than new saws. Um, I don't typically work on new saws. Um, 
maybe, you know, maybe I'm a glutton for punishment, but I like the old stuff. They take way more work. They're harder to find parts for, but uh, I enjoy the classics. You know, this is a classic saw, friends. This dates back, this design, to like the late 70s, okay? And uh, guys were mentioning the 044. Why wouldn't you just run an 044? Well, yeah, um, nothing wrong with an 03. The 044 is lighter. It's faster out of the box. It's got more power. But let's face it, friends, all these saws are getting to be valuable and rare. 044s are getting to be really expensive. Maybe you want a 70cc class still, a vintage one, and you can't find or afford an 044. Well, maybe you want an 038 Magnum. Uh, I've had one of these. It was a good saw. It was reliable, and it pulled, it pulled a long bar stock very, very well. There's also the 038 Super. That one's 66 cc's. I'd like to buy one of those and compare it to a 266 ported and see what kind of power we can get out of it. And there's also a regular 038. The regular 038 is like 60, 61 cc's. The Super is 66. All Magnums are 72 cc's. They have a 52 millimeter bore. The Super has a 50 millimeter. The regular 038 has a 48 millimeter, okay? Um, I've had a lot of emails that the that people are confused about the displacements all the supers are 72 cc's the only difference between or all the magnums sorry even i'm getting confused the only difference between the regular magnum which is this saw and the magnum 2 that i can see is the muffler the magnum 2 has a triple port muffler the regular magnum has a dual port muffler i don't think they run any different i really don't um I'm not an 038 expert, but um, I don't think they run any different. Okay, so what we're doing today, I want to get this thing ready for um, to, to assemble. Okay, so one thing I'm doing right now, I'm just inspecting everything. Okay, making sure that there's no debris in the bottom end. This saw was really dirty. I'm cleaning it up the best that I can. And uh, I want to get this thing back together. So the first thing I'm going to do... You know what, friends? I want to have a look at the crank seals. I think we're going to put crank seals in this saw. Now, one way, and I'll bring you guys in right now, and I'll show you. One way to check your crank seals is by feel. So let's have a look at it. Okay, friends. A good crank seal will put a lot of drag, okay, on the bearing. Now, I can feel some drag on these bearings. So remember, that crank seal lip, here's the crank seal for this saw. Okay, there's a spring in there and it rides. Okay, it puts tension on your crankshaft. Okay, I feel tension, but maybe it needs a little more. I don't know. Let's pull this side of the saw apart. Okay, and I'll bring you guys up close here. Okay, let's have a look, see what we got in here. I haven't done crank seals on one of these in oh, a long time. I can't even remember. I can't even remember. I know I know that this oil or this oiler is gear drive. I know that. These things are built like a Mack truck, friends. They uh there you go. Pull the clip off. We'll probably replace the sprocket. 387 pin. Okay. And that's right, there's a big giant uh, circlip here. So let me grab a circlip tool. See if this one will do the trick. Oop. Again, these are a heavier saw and there's a reason. They are built heavy, okay? Everything about them. Okay, now let's pull this side cover off. I just want to show you guys how these come apart. A lot of you guys uh, emailed and messaged that you have one of these saws. Here's where you control your oiler on this saw. These saws are built. This is from a different era, friends. Um, nowadays, modern saws, everybody wants lightweight and crazy horsepower, okay? That's the, that's the name of the game with modern saws. I don't own a lot of super modern stuff, but I mean, even look at that 562. Out of the box, that would run circles around any 60cc saw from back in the day. Anyone. 
and I've owned a lot of 60cc saws. Uh, my 576, that runs like a ported saw out of the box. Almost 6 horsepower they claim out of those, and I believe it. So, 576 is not light though. That's where they went wrong with that one. Okay, so you pull this plate off. Okay, friends, look at all the stuff underneath here, okay? I can't remember. Hold on. Okay, that comes off there. There you go. Worm gear for your oiler. It's one thing... These are a little bit harder to service your clutch because you got to pull all this stuff apart. Okay. Now I just want to look. This saw has gotten hot. You can see it. Okay. Let's get in here and clean all this stuff up. Okay, friends. Well, <laughs> in the spirit of old saws, and this happens all the time, friends. That's why... I understand why a lot of builders won't take in really old saws because you really never know. Um, you don't know what you're going to find on them or how bad they are or what parts are no good. Friends, this clutch is seized and I mean seized to that crankshaft. Um, so what am I going to do? I am not going to strip the threads off or do anything silly like that. I got my piston stop in here which is a piece of rope. I always use rope because it won't damage anything. Uh, I never use a metal piston stop to stop a piston. Okay, I can't get this off, friends. So what I'm probably gonna do is soak this and let it sit. And uh, I'll jump back, in, back into it maybe tomorrow or the day after. I wanna see if I can get this off. I don't wanna have a situation where I can't, where there's no thread left there, okay? Or no, uh, no meat on this nut. Okay, this clutch has gotten really hot. I can see it. Uh, it's, it's, it's blue. Eh? It's, it's hard to see on camera, but it's, it's, it's been hot. It's dirty, and uh, it is what it is. So, what I was going to show you guys here. So, here's your crank seal, right? Now, this is a really, really tiny crank seal. I'm gonna see if I can show you guys how to pop these out. I get questions like this all the time. This is the important stuff that you need to learn. Um, okay, let's see if I can get this around here. These are really, really tiny. Now, if this won't hook into there, I might have to use a screw. Let's see if I can get this out. Sometimes they won't go, friends. Hold on. Okay, friends. Just gently tap it in there, get the hook to hook onto it, and start popping it out. Wow, is this stuck? Again, this saw's been sitting forever, and uh, now you want to stay away from the case. That's the that's the key. Once it starts going, it'll it'll just pop right out. Some seals are bigger, some seals are smaller. Okay. I'm going to keep working at this. It's stuck good, friends. Everything on this saw is seized, stuck. It's been sitting too long. Okay, here we go. I'll zoom you guys in. All this tool is, is a screwdriver that I've ground a hook onto, okay? See that, guys? I got it in there, in between the seal and the crankshaft. This is a good example. This thing's, these seals are stuck. There you go. Everything is stuck on this saw, okay? Okay, now notice. Hold on. Okay, here's your seal. Now this seal's nice and pliable still. It probably was still good, but while we're in here. Because you know darn well, friends, if you don't change this, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a leak. This seal feels really good. Okay, now, you look down inside of there, I got you guys really zoomed in. Okay, it's dirty and behind there. So once again, I'm going to flush this out and get all the crud out of there before I attempt to install a new seal. Okay. Okay, so, 
I got all the crud out of there. This is the stuff that's important. A lot of stuff is not important. This I consider important. Get all the crud out of there. Give that bearing a chance. Because again, this thing's been sitting. I put a little two-stroke oil on there. And sometimes you'll have to take the timing key off. Okay, now, when you drop this in, make sure it's straight, okay? If you're if you're not sure if it's straight and you really, really want to know when it's starting, take a micrometer or whatever you got, something that'll measure depth, and just see if it's straight. And this one appears to be pretty straight, so, okay? Just have a look at it, because if you start it crooked, it's going to go in crooked, okay? And I'm looking again. I find still seals from this era are a little tighter than Husqvarna seals. Uh, Husqvarna seals fit a little looser, which isn't... They're easier to install, but you guys get what I'm saying? Still, still seals just fit a little tighter in the case, I find. That's just my experience, but... Uh, okay. Just trying to get this thing in there. Nice and straight. I only have one seal, so it's going to be a make it or break it type of scenario. This is a highway seal from Wolf Creek. So if you guys need seals for your 038, give Ryan a check out Ryan's website. He's a good fella. Again, this is sitting a little crooked. I will take my time, friends. I don't care how long it takes because really you get one shot at this. Okay, now what I'll usually use, this is just a generic seal driver, okay, and I'll just take a socket and a hammer, okay, and I will hold it flat, I can already see, there we go, the nice thing about using a socket or a piece of pipe is you can see if it's, if it's not sitting straight, okay. This socket is sitting nice and level now. Now I'm going to drive it down. Now the nice thing about this is, okay, using something this flat is it stopped on the case. Okay, friends, now the last thing you want to do is check. It's sitting slightly proud of the case. Now once you get it in this far, it won't move. I'm going to find a smaller socket. Now they make seal drivers for this. So... If you guys, like, every manufacturer makes factory seal drivers, so if you guys aren't comfy with this, uh, I like to do stuff simply with tools that you guys have in your shop so that you guys can work on power saws too. Okay, there you go, friends. Now, I'm going to back this off. Once again, I can't... There we go. Back this off. Now, friends, the difference in tension is incredible. Now, how much more movement there is or how harder it is to move the old seal was starting to get loose even though it's supple it was worn now friends i really want to get this clutch off but here's the thing one design flaw with a lot of these stills from this era i don't know about the new ones i don't work on a ton of stills that's a dirty top end isn't it friends what have we got in here? Interesting. I don't know what went on there. Anyways, no harm, no foul. Um, I'm just going to pop this uh, wrist pin out. Hold the piston and just tap it, okay? And it'll slide that wrist pin out. There you go. Don't force it. Okay. Right now, friends... Remember how this was before? How I could spin this thing around quickly? Well, this crank seal is actually sealing now. Look, look how tight that is. Okay? So when you're checking bearings and that, if you're not sure, pop the crank seals out. Because this thing feels tight right now, and it is tight. Why? Because that seal is really grabbing. Now... I don't know how long this is going to take or when I'm going to get back to you guys because now we have a situation. These clutches, this nut here is very shallow. There's not a lot of meat 
I haven't stripped it yet, but it's close, friends. Um, oop. I don't want to know. I don't want to know how hard it is to get this off if I strip it. This thing seized. What I'll probably do is heat it up with my torch and then put oil in it. But the only problem with that, friends, if I heat this up with my torch, I'm probably going to need a crank bearing. So there's two ways we can play this game. And it's it's hard to say. I got to think about it. Sometimes it's better to put your tools away and, and think on it for a night. What I can do, friends, is I can leave this clutch on here and see if this saw runs good without replacing that crank seal. Now I have one right here. There it is. Okay. Or I could fight with this clutch and try and get it off. Now I'm more inclined to take the clutch off. I I don't I don't really like uh, not fixing everything. I, I don't like good enough is not good enough in my shop. That's just not how I am. It makes things take longer, but. Okay, friends, so I don't know what I'm going to do. So sometimes it's just better to think and wait on a situation. Okay, friends, I hope that helps you out with crank seal install. Uh, sorry that I'm going to put this back in the bag. I don't want it to get dirty. <laughs> sorry that I couldn't show you both sides, but that's old power saws, friends. You never, ever know what you're going to get into with some of these. This thing's been sitting forever. I don't know why it was parked, but I think it was run with a dull chain. The dull chain makes the clutch hot. A hot clutch can often rust after and stuff like that, and then it's seized. So, um, also a hot clutch can melt the crank seal. Maybe that's why this was parked. Now, I could vacuum and pressure test this once I put it back together. But the way, the way it was, friends, there were so many things wrong with it. It's like, I'm just going to tear it down and go through it. So, um, so... The key part, student crank seals, don't scratch the case, okay? When you're putting your hook in there, and again, friends, this is just a, this is a screwdriver I broke years ago, and I ground a hook onto it, okay? Don't, don't drive this in into the case, because you'll put a big scratch in there, and then the, the crank seal won't seal. You'll have to glue it in. Now, we've run into that on the channel, the 268 giveaway saw um, that I built and give away. Uh, Adam should be getting that any day now. That had a scratch under the crank seal. Somebody went in there at one point and scratched the case. Not all was lost. I glued that in with Moto Seal and that filled that little scratch. No problems with that saw. But if you could stay away from it, get in there, hook into your seal, and uh, pop it out without touching the case. Right? You're 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 getting in there behind the rubber, but not into the case. Okay. Pop it out, always clean underneath there. Start your seal off super straight. See how long it took me there, friends? I made sure, I popped it out a couple times. Oil the seal, and then when you're driving in, use something that's way bigger than the hole. When I first started doing this stuff, friends, because these seals are really small. It's not like you're doing a an output shaft seal on a transmission or something like that that's really big. Those are easier uh, to drive in because you can kind of work it around. These, it's a one-shot deal. Um, I used to use things that were the same size, and what I actually used to do is I would drive the seal right through, and then you're toast. So, if you're just starting off with crank seals, buy two or three of them. Then you'll have them in your spares, and uh, which is good, because then after a while you'll have ten of each crank seal. Um, that way if you make a mistake, especially if it's not your saw, you can just fix it. But, um, it takes practice, friends. I've done hundreds and hundreds of crank seals. And you see how quickly I do it now, but I know what not to do. And what not to do is start it crooked. If it's leaning at the beginning and you start hammering it in, it will literally just crumple and go in crooked. It won't seal properly. And even if it does, because it's in there crooked, it'll wear out. It'll wear a groove into that seal. So start it, start it straight. And then, like I said, like what I do is I make sure... That one was slightly crooked like this, so I tapped on this side to get it straight in there. Once the socket was straight up and down, you know, in relation at a 90 degree angle to the case, I started tapping in. Once it starts going in straight, friends, they usually won't move. Okay, I drove it in as far as I could with this and then made sure that it was flush with the case. That's another thing you want to do, friends, is make take pictures and measurements if you, if you must of where the seal actually sits in relation to the case. 
Some are proud of the case, some are far in, some are flush. Um, all that stuff matters because sometimes if it's not in the right um, spot, it either won't seal or it'll bind or it'll come into contact. Um, if you drive them in too far, sometimes they'll touch the bearing and get hot and they'll leak. So ask me how I know, friends. I've done all these mistakes. Anything you guys can do, I've probably done. So it is what it is. Anyhow, friends, uh, I'm probably just going to drop some penetrating oil on this clutch and leave it for the night. Um, and looking at this clutch, friends, it's chipped in a few spots. Um, somebody, somebody has tried to take this clutch off at one point. That might be why this thing was parked. Maybe it needed a crank seal. So, um, who knows, friends. I guess worse comes to worse. I think I have another one of these clutches. Worst comes to worst, I could slide a big nut over there, weld it to the clutch so that I have a good purchase on it, and then put the big put the big stick on there and thump, 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 and get it off. Um, it is what it is. Another day in the power saw shop. Anyhow, friends, as always, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Um, if we don't jump right back into this, you guys know I'm still messing with the clutch. Um... It is what it is. I guess I could start mocking up the pipe for this saw. This saw needs a muffler because it doesn't have one. And uh, knowing Fab Willy, he's going to want a pipe saw. I know how he rolls. So I've been friends with that guy for a long time. So we'll, we could start mark, mocking up the muffler. And I want to do that and weld, finish welding Buck and Super Pro 70 muffler at the same time. And then uh, after that, friends, I'm going to jump back and forth, I think. I want to get um, back and forth from the 394 that I'm building for me. I'm just gonna build a big, nasty, silly, cutting wood really fast kind of saw. And I wanna do the Farmer Tech kit. I know you guys are interested in that and so am I. I wanna see how smoothly and easily I can assemble that saw and then does it run. If it doesn't run, friends, we'll figure out why it doesn't run. Probably a bad carburetor, just wink, wink. Um, I, I've never had luck with aftermarket carbs, friends, but. <laughs> you guys know that, that have been around here. Anyhow, friends, um, yeah, I'm happy. At least I got one seal in. We're getting closer to getting this done. And like I said, if I can get this clutch off, I'll do another video of doing the other seal. Um, this thing needs a lot of cleaning under here anyways. Then we can put this thing back together and see how it runs. Thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.